Good evening, ladies. Welcome. How are y'all doing tonight? Well, we are always excited to be here on this lovely Wednesday evening, just uh, ready to just praise the Lord, just give him some uh, midday shout. How about that? You know, by the time we make it to this point, we are tired, we're exhausted, so we need that little extra boost, so we just need to feel your energy as you are watching us at home online uh, just a little while longer, because we are just hoping that come the beginning of the year, we can all be together worshiping again on these Wednesday evenings for family night. Wouldn't that be great? Because I know I am ready. I'm ready. Um, I just hope that you are just ready for a beautiful lesson that we're going to have um, by our own sister Mary. And But before Mary brings that lesson on in, we're going to have that sister moment uh, from Larissa. So I'm super excited about that. And, you know, we got a couple of announcements. We're going to keep everyone informed. But we're just hoping that you just and just enjoy this Wednesday uh, evening with us. Don't go get no popcorn. This ain't the movie. This is worship. Pull out your Bibles. Get your mind right, you know, and do all that great stuff. And go ahead and stand up as we start praise and worship. Y'all ready? Go ahead and join us for praise and worship. Wasn't that a great spiritual uplifting song tonight? Everyone should be just 
ready to praise God because he is awesome and he deserves to be praised. Our scripture tonight is going to come from 2 Corinthians 13 and 5. It says, examine yourself to see whether you are in faith. Test yourself. Do you not realize that Christ Jesus is in you? Unless, of course, you fail the test. How many times have we felt ill, had a scratchy throat, or had a pain, and we went to the internet to figure out what it could be, self-diagnosis? Most of the times we come back with the wrong diagnosis. However, when we look for a spiritual assessment, that's where we can do a reflection. And every time you do a reflection, you won't go wrong. By doing a self-assessment, it's not a bad thing, especially when you come to a spiritual healing. We can benefit from looking back over our lives and see where we came from, what we're doing and what we can do to correct that. Reflection allows us to see where we can make corrections and make things better. And we all need a spiritual healing. So I encourage you today to just take some time out of your busy schedule, put it on your schedule to just do a reflection. Yes. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Lord, we come to you tonight with our hearts open to receive you. We thank you for your wisdom, your guidance, your love, and your forgiveness. We thank you for GCBC Women's Ministry. Thank you for allowing us to lean and depend on you. Thank you for every woman that's with us tonight. Father, we're praying that you will prepare her to look within herself and acknowledge where she is weak and where she can grow spiritually, Lord. Give her courage to step out on faith. Trust you will give her clear and precise direction, Lord. Father, guard that heart that is broken. Heal that heart, Lord Jesus. Open that mind that is closed because she constantly heard no. Give her joy and happiness. Father, elevate her desire to be more like you, to show love, be patient, give forgiveness. Give her strength to fulfill the purpose that you have for her and only that you have for her. Father, we pray tonight that this ministry meeting will be uplifting, encouraging, and be whatever you would have it to be, Lord. Father, we thank you for our pastor, for his leadership and his guidance. Father, continue to strengthen him to continue on with the purpose that you have for his life. Father, we thank you for our first lady, for her leadership in the women's ministry. Continue to strengthen her, Lord Jesus. Be with the ladies that are on program tonight. Use each one to be your reflection so that we can see what you want us to see, Lord Jesus. We reflect because we want to be a better woman, a more committed woman of God. Father, we thank you, and it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Good evening. I'm Suzette Musenda with this evening's announcements. Sunday, July the 18th, will be the GCBC High School Senior Recognition Donation Day. Please bring your donations for our seniors. Next, don't forget, ladies, to donate your $100 donation for GCBC's Women's Ministry. You may fill out the church envelope under special donations. The Women's Ministry Vision Statement, to encourage equipped and equate women who will stand up and stand out for God and become strong, godly examples of Christ in their homes, on their jobs, and in their communities, and everywhere they go. Thank you, and those are the announcements. Good evening, everyone. I am Larissa, and I will be giving you your sister moment for tonight. So our sister moment is get on your mark, get set, and go. And in order to get ready, get on your mark and get set and go for Jesus, there's some things that we have to do first. So I'm gonna talk a little bit about study tools, study techniques, just a couple of things to help you study. When I used to teach Bible study, I would have people ask me some questions on how to study the Bible. 
So some of you, this may be old news too, and some of you, it may be new news too. But even if it's old, it's always good to have a refresh. So these are some recommendations that I have. The first recommendation is when we study and read the Bible is to be intentional. So when we read the Bible and study the Bible, we need to be intentionally willing to obey what the Word of God says. Um, so when we read this Word of God, we want to know what God is instructing us to do. And so we come with an attitude, well, am I going to obey, obey the Word? When God says to love those who despitefully use you, huh, do you have an intention to obey that? Secondly, the recommendation is to be intentional about opening your heart and your ears to hear and listen to what the Word of God has to say. When God speaks to us in his word, we know that the word of God is the living breath of God, and so we have to be open to hear and listen. And then thirdly, as my professor would say, you cannot study without a pen and paper. So always have a pen and paper on hand. All right, so I want to talk about a couple of things, four things I'm going to discuss. It's the who, the what, and uh, the who, the what, the why, and the how. So when we do Bible study, you want to look at these four different things. Number one is the who. Who is speaking and who are they speaking to? So we're going to use a few, um, a few scriptures, and we're going to tell the writer of this scripture is Paul. So we know that right away. So that's going to be the who is speaking. So let's look at 1 Corinthians 1 and 1 and see who is being spoken to. 1 Corinthians 1 and 1, Paul called as an apostle of Jesus Christ by the will of God and Sosthenes, our brother. So um, in this particular scripture, um, church, that the, the Paul is speaking to the church. So there's two basic places that are people that got the, the, the writer is speaking to. It's either the church as an individual or the universal church. So this church is Great Commission Church. So speaking to a church or the universal church, but the universal church makes up every church all over the nations. We are one body in Christ, and so we're a universal church. So he's talking to this church because he says, I, uh, the church at Corinth and all in every place that call on the name of Jesus is the scripture. So when he says that, that lets us know that he's speaking to the church as well as to all those who call on the name of Jesus. So now let's look at 1 Thessalonians 1. 1 Thessalonians 1 and 1, Paul and Sylvanius and Timothy to the church of the Thessalonians in God the Father and the Lord Jesus Christ, grace to you and peace. Right. So he's speaking directly to the church in this one because he says to the church at Thessalonia. And so that lets us know that this is who he's speaking to. So these are some things that you can think about when you do your Bible study. Who is speaking and who is he speaking to? So then the next one is what? So the what is, what is the theme or message or what is being said? What is the writer trying to say? What is he trying to convey to us? So in these particular scriptures, in 1 Corinthians 1, the emphasis is on how to live as a Christian. So he's saying to the church at Corinth how to live, and of all the nations, how to live as a Christian. So in 1 Thessalonians, what he's talking about and what the theme is, is to stay encouraged. Um, he's telling them to stay encouraged in, in difficult times because he's saying you know, to the church, which is in, in, in God, which is at the Thessalonians, which is in God, the Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. So he's telling us to stay encouraged. So then the question is the why. So we talked about the who. We want to pay attention to who's speaking. And in these particular uh, scriptures, we know that Paul is speaking. We want to talk about the what. What's the message? What's the theme? There's a message in 1 Corinthians is to what? Stay in, stay in 1 Corinthians, the message was the emphasis on how to live as Christians. In 1 Thessalonians, the message is to stay encouraged. So then why? Why is the speaker saying this? What is the reason for Paul giving this message? Well, in 1 Corinthians, he's saying this because the gospel was being uh, twisted by the culture. And so he was encouraging them to, to continue to live as Christians. Don't listen to the new stuff. Like today, we have woke people, or we have, you know, all these different groups that gives us different messages about Jesus Christ. So he's basically saying to stay focused on what we've already heard. So then in 1 Thessalonians, the why is because the gospel is authentic for living 
and for the dead, because they were asking him questions about what happens to those who've already risen in Christ. So Paul was giving them a message that you don't have to worry about them because the gospel that we heard is an authentic gospel and it's for the living and for the dead. So that's the who, the what, and the why. So then the how. And the how is how does this apply to me? How does this apply to my daily life? So you always wanna look at scripture and look at how can I make this apply to my life or how does this apply to my life today? Because even though the scripture may be written in old time, it's valid for today. So when we read scripture or when we start reading scriptures, I have some suggestions, especially for people who are new believers or new readers. And I always suggest that we first start off with, because that's the question people ask me oftentimes, is where do I start? And so my recommendation is to start with the Gospel of John. And the reason for that is because when you get involved in something, you want to know about it. Um, I assume, um, First Lady, when you, you're Delta, right? So I assume you did some research on the Deltas. You wanted to know what their purpose was. You want to know what their standards was. You want to know how they got started. You want to know all about them, you know, what their philanthropy was. So the Gospel of John gives us the character and nature of Jesus Christ. So you want to know who this Jesus Christ is that you said yes to. So it's, I recommend that you read the Gospel of John because it gives us the character and the nature of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Then I suggest that maybe reading Acts because Acts gives us church history. So we're a part of this church now. We're a part of the universal church. We've said yes to the Lord and we've joined this new, this new group. So we wanna know about this group that we join. So we study the book of Acts because it gives us church history. It tells us how the church was formed. The book of Acts tells us what the church believes and it teaches us how the church is supposed to operate. So how do we walk it out? So when we read these scriptures, we want to know how do we walk it out? How do we live it? So there are some scriptures that give us that. The epistles, um, Paul's epistles, maybe Galatians, Ephesians, Philippians, Colossians, 1st, 2nd, 3rd, Thessalonians, give us an idea of how to walk it out. Galatians 5 and 16 says, walk in the spirit, then you will not fulfill the lust of the flesh. That teaches us how to walk it out, right? Ephesians 4.1 says, I beseech you that you walk worthy of the vocation where you have been called. That teaches us how to walk it out. Galatians 3 says, seek these things, Galatians 3 rather, seek those things which are above. And that teaches us again how to walk it out. So when you read these, you don't have to read one at a time. You can read a little scriptures or on each one, but these are just some tidbits to help you in Bible study. So we look at the who, the what, the why, and the how, and then we look at where to start. And thank you for your attention. So next, um, we will have um, our teaching moment um, uh, by our very own Sister Mary, who's going to give us a wonderful lesson. So let's all give her a hand of applause. Chapter 12, verse 1, near the end of the verse, let us lay aside every encumbrance and sin which so easily entangles us and let us run with endurance the race that is set before us. There are a couple of things said here as a means to running. It says, lay aside every encumbrance and sin which so easily entangles us. Not just sins. Don't just lay aside sins to run this race. Lay aside every other weight that gets in your way. What this says is, don't just ask, what's wrong with it? Don't just ask, is it a sin? That's about the lowest question you can ask in life. So what, well, preacher, what question should I ask if it's not, is it a sin? And the answer is, does it help me run? That's the answer. Does it get in my way when I'm trying to become more patient, more kind, more gentle, more loving, more holy, more pure, more self-controlled? Does it get in my way or does it help me run? Look to Jesus and lay aside sins for sure and lots of other stuff. 
and a little voice is going to say, this looks like a lot of loss and not much gain. At that point, open your Bible to Hebrews 12, 2, and look at how Jesus in Gethsemane said, tomorrow morning is going to be a lot of loss. This is going to be mega loss at 9 o'clock tomorrow morning. In fact, it's going to happen all night long. I will never sleep again before I die. And it's going to hurt like hell, literally. How did he do that? For the joy that was set before him, he endured the cross. So the answer is, yes, it's going to be loss. But I promise you, on the authority of God's word, the Christian life is gain. Say to the flesh and say to Satan, the sufferings of this life are not worth comparing to the glory that is to be revealed to me. And so I will lay aside every weight and I will lay aside every sin and I will run with Jesus. Did y'all like that video? Are you all ready to jump in to this race that God has called you to do? All right, all right. So he went through preparation. And you know when you're on the job, they bring you into orientation, they sit you down, and you got to watch film, videos. Well, that was a video for this race. So now we're about to start uh, in Hebrews, like he said, and we'll be doing Hebrews, the 12th chapter, starting at the first verse. Y'all ready? Ready. Ready. So Hebrews says, therefore, since we are surrounded by a cloud of uh, witnesses, the life of faith, let us strip off, take off every weight and you know what he said (laughs) don't just think about the sin part but you got to also think about that weight that slows us down especially the sin that so easily trip us up and let us run with endurance the race god has set before us we do this by keeping our eyes on jesus the uh, champion who initiates and perfects our faith. If you look at my shirt, it says, I'm starting with Christ, I'm running this race, and I'm finishing with Christ. So he is the author and the finisher and the perfecter of our faith. So think of all the hostility he endured from sinful people then you won't become weary and give up. After all, you have not yet given your lives and your struggle against sin. And have you forgotten the encouraging word God spoke to you as his children? So, we're about to jump into a race that God has set before us. So he has, you have watched the video, he's given you some instruction, he went through and told you about the weight and about the sin that so easily, the sin that so easily can trip you up. So this is the preparation phase that you have to start before you're able to run this race. So let's look at what the preparation is. It says, we first got to look at the witnesses. Because it said, therefore, and therefore, sometimes, right, means it's uh, presentated on what came before. So that means chapter 11. And chapter 11 is that chapter that speaks of uh, all the heroes of faith. And, you know, like Abraham, Moses, uh, even uh, he talks about Enoch, and he talks about all the ones that has walked this walk with you. So what has they done then, uh, Mary? Then they went through and walked this walk so they can be there to encourage you. 
an Hebrew writer who we don't know was writing this to the Christians uh, that was about to give up because the Jewish leaders was trying to tell them that it wasn't Christ that uh, they needed. They needed to go back to the old law. And so what the writer is trying to do is to tell them that Christ is superior than any angels. You love Moses? You love Moses. We know Moses did everything that God asked him to do almost but he didn't see the promised land. Christ is superior than Moses. Christ is superior than anything because what John 1 and 1 say, in the beginning was the what? Word. And the word was where? And the word did what? And he dwelled among us. That's it. So what Christ did for us he helped us to be able to come into this race. Yes, chapter 11 lists a lot of uh, witnesses, but at the same time, they still had some what? Flaws. They still went through some struggles. So then he said, okay, yeah, they went through some struggles. So let's lay aside every weight that so easily do what? Ensnares us. And and when I was looking up, it says like a stronghold. And I think my pastor preached something that freed me. And I still take it with me. I think it was a couple years ago. And he said, the stronghold isn't that it holding you. The stronghold is you holding it. So what is that it? that you got to let go of? What negative thinking that you're thinking that the enemy has planted that you need to go back and refocus? That's what Paul said. Think on those things that are heavenly, those things that are pure. So we have to think on those things. We can't let even relationships trip us up. Why would you say that? Because sometimes relationship could put you in a place that you don't even want to be. If you, it could be your family member or whatever, if they're on drugs and you're worried about them, you find yourself going by drug houses on the street. Or if your daughter on the pole and you worry about it and hadn't come home, where you find yourself at? going by the strip joint, right? If your friends that you had before Christ, before you accepted him, they would trip you up too. Come on, girl, come to this club. Come on, girl, hang out with this. Oh, it's okay. It's nothing wrong with it. Then what happened, the enemy is very subtle. You hear me? He's very subtle. He can start with the and the next thing you know, you're saying, where am I? Because God asked Elijah, where are you? What are you doing here? But he was feeding him. But then after he felt like, okay, you should be good and full by now. You should be able to go on this journey that I've called you to do. Then he asked him, why are you here? Why are you going through these strongholds and you know what you need to let go? I talked about the um, drug addict. I talked about the girl on the pole. But you're hiding here in church with your gossiping, lying self. Bitter, conceited self. So we can hide among, but what God is saying to the writer, he's telling him, tell them to let it go. If it's going to trip you up, why keep it? Right? If you're running and it's tripping you up, what's going to happen? You're going to fall. But one thing I love about God, Ooh, y'all, I have to say a whoop right there. What I love about God is that I might fall, but he, in his infinite wisdom, loves me so much 
And when I come to him and ask him, God, confess that I did this thing, God. Please forgive me and repent. And then he says, get on up, my daughter. Get up and let's start this race again. So then he tells us uh, about get rid of the sin. And I, I went through and we can name all kinds of sins, right? But he said, the sin. And that one sin, that one sin I think he's talking about is unbelief. This is the faith chapter, Hebrews, we're talking about. But sometimes we have some unbelief. What did the man tell Jesus? He said, heal my son. And he said, well, all them, but they couldn't do it, right? The disciples couldn't do it. And he told Jesus, asked Jesus, help me. Help me with my unbelief. What are you believing and trusting God for? Because some of these Judaizers, they did not believe in Jesus Christ. So they were far from the race. They couldn't even jump in the race because they wasn't even prepared to get into the race. So now, once we start believing, Dr. Allen here at our church, he says, do you believe every word in the Bible is true? And if you do, then you got to believe the entire Bible, whether you like it, the part that exhausts you, or the part that convicts you, but you still believe. And the main person you got to believe in is Jesus Christ, because he is the one that died for our sin. Y'all, do y'all know we was on our way to hell? The only way out was death, but because of Jesus and the sacrifice he made, okay, well, maybe y'all don't. Mary was on her way to hell. The only way out was death. But thank God he did what he needed to do. I ain't going to say he did a 360, because if I turn all the way around, I'll be right back where I was. But he did do a 180. He turned my whole life around. And if you don't believe it, I wouldn't be standing up here uh, trying to teach you about faith. Okay, so now we got the preparation. Whew. We done throw it off this weight. We done start believing. So we got rid of the sin. And you know what your sin is. And like the man said, don't worry about the sin, but get all of it off. Because you can't even run when you're burdened down, when he's telling you to bring me all your burden. Cast them all on me. But we won't do that. We only give them a few because some of it I got to work out myself. Okay, so now we're positioned. We're positioning in the race. So let's look back at this uh, verse. To position. So it tells us to throw off every rate that slows us down, especially the sin that so easily trips us up. And let's run with endurance the race that God has set before us. So that means we got to get in position. I can't go over here and try to be first lady. He didn't call me that. I can't sing uh, like the choir or the praise team. I always tell people I wish I could because I could talk, but I can't sing. But if you could, then you would uh, glorify God with that. But he's saying that I've set this path for you, Mary. I can't jump over here and do what the cameramen do because I know nothing about the camera. But I can only do what Mary has, what God has called Mary to do. I always tell people like this, I can't raise your children because he knew who he needed. I'm going to use uh, Sister Suzette as an example. But Sister Suzette can't raise my boys either because she probably wouldn't be able to handle them. So God wants you to stay in your lane. 
If he puts you as a doctor, don't say, oh, I'm just a doctor, because he planted you there for a reason. Or if he say he put you as a school teacher, don't say, oh, girl, I'm just a school teacher, because he needed you there to pour into some other child. Don't say, oh, I'm just a janitor, but he's asking you to keep the building clean, because you never know who may walk up and who might need some uh, answers. So then um, he might, you might say, well, Lord, what have you called me to do? And if you ask him, is he would tell you, because guess what I found out? Usually your calling, it was frustrate you the most. If you don't like how nurses treat the people, then you're saying, you know, if I was that nurse, I'd be doing this, this, and that. And you go without even being a nurse, and you try to take care of people, and you go because you was already there visiting uh, maybe someone you know, a loved one, and you go and try to help out. Whatever frustrates you the most, and it doesn't cost you anything, like it, it comes with ease. You know, like Suzette, uh, Sister Suzette always in class, she's always talking about her students, and she love them, and I don't care how, what they say, and I'm going like, ooh. But that ain't my calling, right? So run in your lane. So we, we, look, we looked at the witnesses. The witnesses are back then, they were in a coliseum, and they were looking at a foot race. So they were all in uh, the, the rows and the pews uh, around the coliseum. And they was there to encourage. That's what they call the witnesses. But look around in your home or people that you already know. Family, friends may have already gone, but they walked that faith walk out and they left you some nuggets for you to do. Yeah, so you too gotta walk it out for the ones that still encourage as a witness what God has done. Because you know, Revelation does say they wasn't only, they only didn't overcome by the blood of the lamb, but they also overcame by the words of your testimony. And this is what he's saying. Look at what the witness is doing. They understand. They ready. So then the runner, he's in his lane. And then the guide. Who is my guide? It said, God has laid this perfect walk out for us. I know the plans that I have for you. It's to prosper you and not to what? Harm you. Okay? And then he directs our steps. That's our God. And then not only in directing our step, and when you're obeying him, he delights himself in ordering our steps. And that's Psalm 37, 23. And then once we have prepared, we in position, we put our foot in the block, which is the word, because we're standing on it. Now we ready to go, right? Running the race. How do I run this race? So the first one was get in your lane, get set, and now we about to take off. Stand up wherever you are. Do some stretches, because I'm about to take off. We about to go on a journey with the Lord. And he says, you can sit. He says, run with focus, your eyes on Jesus. What? How do I run being focused in my eyes set on Jesus? Well, we talked about the witnesses. And I told you the sacrifice that Jesus had done. So likewise, as Christians, we work hard to strengthen our faith, to endure the race of faith. We must seek him daily in his word and in prayer. We must seek fellowship among other believers and let our fellow ch uh, church members know and encourage them in the faith. I 
always say if you was a single parent and you see a, a single parent struggling with their kids, offer some advice, encourage them, let them know, you know, I too was a single parent and I raised two, I raised one, or however your story goes. Or if you see someone struggling in their walk, you know, when I first joined, this walk wasn't always easy. And to now, it's not always easy. But with the help of the Lord, you will get through. And that's what the witnesses was doing. But Jesus saying, if you don't see nobody else, see my walk. Keep your eyes on me. Walk with me, and I will show you how to get through. He got beat down. You say, oh, girl, I got beat down at work today. Girl, you didn't get beat down. <laughs> Jesus, the one, got beat down. He the one got ridiculed. He the one they put that crown on. He the one did it. And why did he do it? He did it for the joy. Who is his joy? We are. Woo! He did it for me. He did it for you and you and you. He did that. He sacrificed his life for us that we may have a chance to win this race. Then he says, not only do you run with the focus on me, he said, run with perseverance. The steadfastness of the Old Testament witness speaks to believers today of the rewards about staying in the race. You know, and persevering means you're pressing. You're pressing your way through. It ain't easy, but I'm going to press my way through. And that's what they did. In the Christian life, we run this race of faith. We will get through it. And life on the other side of this issue, this problem, this fatigue, whatever it is, you will get through it. The call to respond gracefully and nobly to God's invitation. So again, I ask you, are you ready to jump into this race? Do you have anything that's going to slow you down? Do you have anything that's going to trip you up? If so, let go of it. But Paul talks about finishing strong. The good news is Jesus made us lightweight runners because he took everything to the cross. He took the burdens of our sins and placed them on himself at the cross. Then he rose from the dead and sat at the right hand of God to pray for us to fight sin and to continue in the faith. This race of faith, you got to know your creator. God is our creator. So if he created me and he know every strand of my hair, he goes before me in, in Isaiah 40. He make that crooked place straight. If he knows my every steps, don't you want to get to know him? Don't you want to see what he's asking of me? Why did he create me? What it is I supposed to be doing, Lord? Help me with this. So as I get ready to close in, in the news, there is a runner everybody was looking at. Everybody knew she was going to make it. But one thing tripped her up. One thing. And that's what I'm telling y'all. The enemy is subtle. She got away with it maybe one time. Then she got away with it another time. I'm not. I'm just using sin progression. Then the next thing you know, everybody is saying, put in a race. Don't let that. But it's a rule. She broke the rule. But now does that mean she ain't going to be able to run again? She just had a hiccup. She let one little thing trip her up. It wasn't nothing on the runway that did it. It wasn't the people inside of her that did it. She said herself, I decided to do this. Don't let one little thing trip you up. But I thank God, just like they're going to do with her.
he gives us chance after chance after chance. So if I go back to the Lord after asking him, confessing to him, and I said, Lord, please forgive me. I know I told you I wasn't going to do that. What you talking about? You know, God, the sin, I told you the other day I wasn't going to do what you talking about. I'm a second chance God. Over and over and over again, he forgives us. So what is bigger than God? What issue is bigger than God? Think about it. What is it that you're wrestling with that you feel like tripping me up? Or I can't get through this. Or this problem is too hard. Think about Jesus. Think about the one that you put your trust in. They cannot. Your issues, your situations, your problems cannot stand up against the Lord. Finish strong. Paul says, I've fought a good fight. That's what he said. He said, I have finished the work I was to do. That's what he's telling Timothy. I have kept the faith. There is a crown which comes from being right with God. And so what I did, I went out and got some medals to give to you because we all win. You stay focused on Jesus Christ, and we all will win. We are winners. We're overcomers. You can't get through that issue. You will be on the other side of it. God will give you the strength when you think you're weak. And he loves you all in the midst of it. Stay in the race and finish strong. Amen. Man, we got to give uh, Mary another round of applause. Amen, amen. Thank you so much for that lesson. It was right on time. You don't even know it was right on time because it's not easy. I was over there taking notes, okay? She said you got to be prepared, preparation. You have to prepare for the race. You know that sister moment with... Uh, Larissa was talking about have your, your Bible, your tools, the pen and paper. You have to read your word. That's going to get you prepared because if you're not reading your word, man, you living dangerously. I'm talking about every day. Let me forget a day. But my whole attitude just be like, real, wait, what? Stoop, wait, she said what? Baby, y'all know that this first lady need to read the word. Y'all be like, what is wrong with her? Next thing, position. You got to get in position. Stay in your lane. Get out of folks' business. You know what I tell people? Mind the business that pays you, and you ain't on my payroll. That's what I tell people. Stay in your lane, because God, did, he wants you to do you. He has made you you for a purpose. He is good. He, he ain't made no mistakes. You are beautifully and wonderfully made. You don't need to be in nobody else's business. Because you got your own, and a lot of it, right? Right. And then that, that last but not least is persevere. You can make it. Stay in the race. Because we what? We winners. We have already won. He's already prepared a place for us. You know, we just, we just bringing others, bringing others along. We don't want to leave people behind. Right? All right. Thank you so much for that. I just hope that you all enjoyed it. You took notes. You are getting prepared if you are not already prepared. And sometimes we got to go re-prepare because we done fell off. We done got in other folks' business, you know, so we got to get on back in our own business so we can take care of the business that God has for us to do so we can win the race. Thank you, ladies. Thank you so much. We're just going to close out with prayer because, man, it, it's... This is wonderful. Thank you. Thank you.
Awesome. Wasn't that a great lesson, both from Larissa and Mary, giving us the tools or how to use the tools that we have before us and how to get prepared and to stay in this race that God has assigned to us. We thank you guys for that. It was uplifting. It was encouraging. And that's what we're here for. Thank you. Let's go to the Lord in prayer as we end the, tonight's meeting. Father in heaven, we come to you tonight. We thank you for this meeting, Lord. We thank you for the ladies that spoke to us and shared some words of encouraging, Father, for us to stay on track, Lord, to keep our focus on you and how to be prepared to do that, Father. And basically they're telling us to, to cancel out the white noise, Father, to just be prepared by staying in our lane, Father being prepared by noticing those sins that hinder us from staying focused on you, Father. We pray to you tonight, Lord, that you would cancel all of those out. Keep our mind focused on you. Father, when we step right or step left, Father, we pray that you would just gently nudge us back to the center, Lord Jesus. Allow us to read your word, understand your word, and apply it to our daily lives. Not to next week or two weeks from now, but to our daily lives every day, Father. Father, when we don't do that, we do fall short. And Father, we come to you tonight asking you forgiveness when we fall short. And we're so thankful, Father, because you are a forgiving Father. Father, as we leave here tonight, we pray that you give us traveling grace and you be with every woman under the sound of my voice tonight. Hear their prayers, Lord. We love you and we need you. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen.